Hello everyone and welcome to whatever this video is about. I don't usually do these vlog type videos, but every once in a while my schedule gets too hectic and I just can't produce a weekly time consuming video. And in those cases I like to share about the other aspect of my work, which is, you know, when I'm actually a drummer and I play things with people. So I just got back from Germany, where I was on tour with these fine gentlemen, Ron Minis and Bau Filipovic. And of course, a shout out to our sound guy, Shachar Levy, our videographer, Ron Cohen, and our epic booking agent, Ruben Bauer. You guys are amazing. It was a short, but rather eventful tour that started off with me losing my cymbal bag. <laughs> We all arrived in Zurich airport and my cymbal bag was nowhere to be found. I have my cymbals there, my drumsticks, percussion, toothbrush and Ron's pocket knife. I need the bag. Oh, and if that's not enough, our first show is in the Montreux Jazz Festival. Montreux, Montreux Jazz, whatever, however, it's a pretty big deal. Luckily, I know awesome people. A great student of mine, Bastien, who happens to live in Geneva, which is pretty close to the festival, saw that we were coming to play and he sent me this message. The conditions are fantastic, but if you need anything while you're here, let me know. I don't know why I gave him a German accent, he doesn't sound like that. And then I lose my cymbal bag, so... Uh... Hey, Bastian, how are you doing? I need uh, all of your things. And without even hesitating, Bastian showed up to soundcheck with a bag full of stuff for me to choose from, and he basically saved the gig for us. The cymbals sounded amazing, the gig was epic and all thanks to you, Bastian. So thank you very much, you're a legend. After the show, I met Sharon's epic family because they're from Switzerland, so they came to the show, which was great. And then we started driving towards Germany. And remember, I still need cymbals for the Germany shows. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm super proud to be endorsed by Minel Cymbals for the past six years. So I emailed this guy, Norbert from Minel, explaining the situation that I was in. Also telling him that we'll be driving right next to the Minel factory and I asked if he can help me out in any way. To make a long story short, not only did I get a case full of the cymbals that I asked for, he also gave me and the guys a tour of the factory, which was simply unbelievable. So thank you, Norbert, and thank you, Minel Cymbals, for all the incredible support you've been giving me for the past six years. Thank you very much. The tour continued pretty smoothly with close to zero hiccups, including 20 or so hours driving a van, a show inside of a ship, and a piano that had to be craned down to the stage. Footage brought to you by Sharon. Don't, don't drink it. It's not done yet. Oh my god. Alright. Yes. What do you have to say, Shalom? I'm stressed. So now I'm in Israel for a week or so, but later this month I'm gonna go to the UK for a few days and then I'm going to Sweden to give some polyrhythmic workshops with the guy himself, the man, the Viking, Matthias Ia Eklund. I'll be joining his free guitar camp and I am beyond excited for that. Alright, let's change gears a bit. I started this channel when the pandemic hit, but despite moving continents twice, I produced 68 time-consuming videos, filmed on 11 different tables, 3 walls, and on the floor. Uh, more than once. I've recorded audio under blankets, in closets, in the kitchen, in the car, and I used a bunch of food to explain polyrhythms. Nothing got wasted, don't you worry. Hell, this episode was recorded in a bomb shelter. The city that my parents live in was bombed. There was a war in Israel, so I had to actually record under fire. Battle. Pretty battle. Now, why am I saying all this? Just to let you know that I'm back in Boston and I finally have a legit workroom for all of my stuff. Sadly, I don't have the before pics because, because I'm stupid like that. So just imagine that all of this is 
a floor. The first step was just to throw all the stuff into the room. And then the organizing started. Put some music on, of course, and then I started just making some space so I can maneuver around, followed by just throwing a bunch of empty suitcases on that top shelf thing. After that, I opened the drum kit that I bought, the Yamaha Stage Custom. It's nothing fancy, but it's affordable, it's decent, and it sounds great. Put on some more music, then replacing the heads and putting on the cymbals that I got. Then I decorated all the walls with all the stuff that my 17-year-old self kind of wanted to have in his drum room, followed by some cool time-consuming memories. After that, Sharon and I got this five-ton box into the room somehow, and we, we watched Jerry open it in a vicious, violent act all boxes should fear. Is that metal? I hate to say it, but... It, yeah. yeah, not to be contradictory, but it's very metal. Jerry did a great job assembling the table, and we did a very good job annoying her in the process, I guess. Oh, and this is a great shot. Catch this. It's very funny. <laughs> and now all that's left is to basically just clean up Jerry's mess and finally set up the time consuming table once and for all. And voila, my room is done. All my drum stuff, all my time consuming stuff, everything in one loud and happy room. So if you need some session work done, I can uh, practice it there. I won't record, it sounds like shit. I I'll practice there. So, I'll finish up this video with some cool announcements regarding new music that I've played in that is gonna be released soon. Number one, on September 1st, Ron Minis Trio album number two is coming out, titled Smartphones, Stupid People. We recorded this album a while back in the studio in France and it's finally coming out. Feel free to go check out the time-consuming video I did with Ron about one of those songs, some nasty 5 over 7 stuff. And it goes something like tink 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 tink. Oh, and also, we're gonna be touring Europe again in the fall in support of this album, so stick around for some tour dates. Number two, The Fractal Sextet, which is gonna be released September 2nd. This project was very, very exciting for me to take part in, and it involves musicians from all over. Fabio Anile on keys, John Durant on guitar, Colin Edwin on bass, Andy Pupato on percussion, and of course, Stefan Thelen on guitar as well. I flew to Switzerland last year to meet with Stefan and record drums for this project in the amazing Powerplay studios right outside of Zurich, and it was a blast. This album has some of the deepest rhythmic drumming I've ever done, together with the most mature, tasteful and musical execution of polyrhythms I've ever heard. I am very excited for this one. A time-consuming episode will definitely follow. Number two and a half, and I say half because it's not an album that is going to be released, it's an album that has just been released, the Berkeley Indian Ensemble debut album Shuruat. <laughs> This album has been in the works for 11 years. This album is finally available on all platforms and you guys should really go listen to it because it's very, very good. Hopefully tour dates coming soon. And number three, last but not least, a new Comb EP. The previous EP, The Violent Heart, came out in 2020 and this one is coming out uh, soon, I guess. I mean, the master is done, the artwork is done and we recorded a music video for one of the songs that I think is gonna look pretty sick. 
so stay tuned. Huh? I mean, and if you like Distortion, Prog, Tabla, and uh, Leo Rosari, this album is right up your alley. Ah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. It is very hot in Israel, so I am going to go eat ice cream. I'll see you in the future. for none of you to care at all? Yeah, it's way more metal if we don't care about it. Wow. I guess I uh, didn't know all that stuff was metal. Anyway, follow me.